It's been a great conference so far, and thank you very much for coming. I am going to talk to you about the very exciting subject of Federated Chaomian Mints, or what I believe is effectively the third pillar of the Bitcoin open source ecosystem. Now, when making this, comp when making this talk, I wanted to think about and reflect on why we are here. And I, I don't mean in the existential sense, and I don't mean why we're here at Bitcoin 2022. I mean, why are we here at the open source stage? I think the reason we're here is because we understand how vital open source software is to the Bitcoin ecosystem and ensuring that Bitcoin achieves its ultimate objective of separating money from state. Now, we understand that Bitcoin is a global scale, decentralized, decentralized spelled in the UK way, by the way, not the US way, censorship resistant money. Now, core to that, and no pun intended, is Bitcoin core, which is a global scale, decentralized, censorship resistant form of money and store of value. Now, over the last few years, we've seen the second pillar appear, which is Lightning, which again is a censorship resistant, decentralized, global scale payment network. But I believe we are missing a pillar. What we do not have and what we need is a censorship resistant, decentralized, global scale form of Bitcoin custody. Well, at least until Fadiment came along. Now, before I go into details as to, or give you an overview of what Fedimint is, I think it's important to understand why a decentralized Bitcoin custody system is so vital. And to understand that, we need to understand what are the current options if you want to custody your Bitcoin. Now, the first option, funnily enough, is third-party custody, or with a non-Cockney accent, third-party custody. Now, this is where you entrust your Bitcoin, not to yourself, not to a friend, but to a third party, someone who you don't know, i.e. a stranger. Now, way back when, we would trust our Bitcoin to unregulated exchanges, such as MT Gox. And as we all hopefully know, that didn't end well. What would happen is, if you trust your Bitcoin to someone who doesn't know you, they would either not look after it properly, and it will get stolen or lost, or they themselves will run off with your Bitcoin. So, in response to this, a number of people tried to set up regulated exchanges. I was one of these. Eight years ago, I set up a Bitcoin exchange. Now, the intent was good. I wanted to, and all of the others, wanted to set up exchanges to resolve these problems. But, we resolved one and created a new problem. You see, what we were asking people to do is to, and we educated them to do, is to take their fiat and use it to buy a censorship resistant money and then put it on an exchange which was regulated by a regulator. Regulators exist to regulate. Another word for regulation is censorship. So, you don't have to be a genius to realize that that's also, in time, not going to end well. Now, this is not hyperbole. I, over eight years, saw an increasing level of regulation coming down the line. And now, today, we are seeing, whatever your view, we're seeing Ukraine, Russia, where Russians around, innocent Russians around the world are, are being lost, are losing their access to their Bitcoin. In the, the European Union, we're seeing new regulations come into place which effectively prevent or make it very difficult for people to gain personal custody of their Bitcoin. So, what was the solution to this? We advise and educate people to use first-party custody. 
This is where you are taking full personal responsibility for your Bitcoin. Now, from a censorship resistant point of view, this is the gold standard. But the reality is that after eight years of running a Bitcoin only exchange, I had to come to the conclusion that maybe we can get 5%, maybe 10, maybe even 20% of people to self custody, but 80 to 90% are never going to get there. And the reasons are simple. One, for many people, it was just too technically complex. They did not feel comfortable with the technical sophistication needed to self custody. For others, they just couldn't afford it, especially in the global south. Uh, I'm a board member for B Trust, and I understand that many people around the world do not, would not be able to afford the cost for a hardware wallet, or if they could, it was better, given their total volume of Bitcoin, to buy more Bitcoin than to buy a hardware wallet. And third, for a lot of people, they were just too afraid. They just did not feel comfortable with custodying Bitcoin themselves, and they preferred to trust someone else other than themselves. So, in this arena, Fediment appears. And Fediment is a portmanteau, a mashup of the words Federated Chalmian Mint. Now, Fediment contains three key innovations. One is philosophical, the second is structural, and the third are technical. The first, the philosophical, is instead of using third-party stranger custody or first-party do-it-all-yourself custody, you use third, second-party community custody, i.e., you take a community of close friends, close family, close work colleagues, and they form a community wallet together. We've already seen this happening in Bitcoin Beach. I was there last year in Bitcoin Beach in, in El Salvador. This idea is strange potentially to people in the West, but in the global South, this is very common for people to trust their friends and family. <laughs> the second is structural. The Fediment protocol recognizes that not all people in a community have the same technical acumen. So, just like in days of yore where tribes, the, the strongest in the tribe would look after the tribe, the technically strongest in a Fediment community take, do the heavy lifting of running the, uh, the, the community wallet, the Fediment community wallet, on behalf of the tribe. Now, clearly, in that scenario, the guardians, what I like to call guardians, have a level of influence on the Bitcoin that normal members don't have. And in order to sort of effectively create guardrails around that and limitations on that, two technologies are put into place. The technologies that give Fediment its name. The first is the use of federations. And you can think about these simply as multi-signature wallets so that no one guardian, and in, in large federations, several guardians can act together to be able to create a transaction to take money out of the wallet. So you avoid key man single points of contact risk. The second is the use of Chaomi and Mints, and this is quite key. Because Chaomi Mints is a, is a privacy protocol, and you'll hear more about this later, which means that guardians can work to manage the communal or community wallet, but they do not know the individual balances of community members. Furthermore, if a deposit comes into the wallet or a request for withdrawal goes out of the wallet, the guardians don't know who the money Bitcoin coming in is for or who offered the request to go out of the wallet. Now, this provides a level of privacy which is not only better than third-party custody where the exchange, the stranger, 
knows everything about your usage and all of their users. But it's actually better than first party custody as well. Because blockchain analytics companies or blockchain monitoring companies are not able to determine the difference between a federated Fedimint wallet and a normal first party wallet. So from their point of view, it's all one user. They can know the total amount of balance, but they don't know which person within that community, including the guardians, are doing what. So taken together, this means that Fedimint is global scale because we are able to get not only the most technically sophisticated out from a regulated regime, but also their close friends and family and work colleagues as well, wherever they may be in the world. It's decentralized because you can envision a future where there are 10,000 to 100,000 Fedimint communities around the world, not the few dozen hyper large exchanges, regulated exchanges that we are quickly heading towards. And it is censorship resistant because if you are providing this service as a guardian and you are not choosing to make money from it, then in most jurisdictions around the world, most reasonable jurisdictions, that is exempt from regulation because you are not carrying out the task by way of business. And therefore, you do not need to be regulated like hardware wallets. Taken together, I believe, and when I heard about this a year ago, I believed that Fedimint has the potential to be the third key pillar of the Bitcoin open source ecosystem, a, de a global scale, decentralized, censorship resistant form of Bitcoin custody. Now, what do you do next? You can't see the URL, hopefully you can. The first thing is, please wait and listen to the next talk. This is about the future of Bitcoin privacy. I urge you also to listen to it because it's a really interesting talk, but also you have El Sirian, who's the inventor of the Fediment protocol and also the main contributor to the Minimint reference implementation of the Fediment protocol. Two, where, and I'm sure he will go into more detail as to some aspects of Fediment. Two, you should, it doesn't appear clearly here, but you should go to Fediment.org where you can find out more about Fedimint and understanding of how it works and the reasons behind it. And three, and most important, if you are a Bitcoin open source engineer or developer, or if you are someone who just wants to contribute to, to open source technology, I urge you to go to GitHub and the Fedimint project on GitHub and consider investing your time and contributing to the project. If you choose to do so, you will be helping ensure that Bitcoin achieves its ultimate objective, which is the separation of money from state. Thank you very much.